good to see you this morning. All right, let's turn to the book of Exodus, chapter, uh, chapter 2 and verse 11, and we'll be there in a, in a moment. I want to ask another question this morning as we begin our study, because we're going to be now looking at Moses as he begins his journey uh, to deliver the children of Israel. So I want to ask you this question, and you think about this, and if you write this down, you can think about it during the week. When does God place a divine call on one's life? When does God place a divine call on one's life? Now, if I was sitting there and somebody just off the spur of the moment asked me that, then my mind would probably go to uh, a salvation. It's when God plays a divine call. But actually, God placed a divine call uh, before the foundation of the earth. God's word says, I knew you before the foundation of the earth. In Hebrews chapter 2, it says, I chose you before the foundations of the earth. So we're going to see some examples this morning that God had a, a divine call, a divine purpose for all of us. Even before the foundation of the earth, he knew you, knew, I, knew me. But when we became a Christian, when we surrendered to him, God equipped us through the Holy Spirit. He gave us spiritual gifts to do what he called us to do. Now, an example of that would be Moses. God, God knew Moses before the foundation of the earth. God told Moses' parents that he was a special child. And Moses was taught this as he grew up in, in, in his mother's house, his father's house, for a few years. And they taught him about how God had his hand on him and how God was going to deliver his, uh, the children of Israel. And we're going to see this morning how God begins to work in a calling of Moses that was placed on Moses before he was even born. And got Moses, just like you and I, he's got some cho choices to make. We can look over in the New Testament and we find John. Uh, God put a special call on him. Uh, John the Baptist, that is. And so there's, there's a number of, of cases in the scripture we can look at that. But when, when we surrender to God, then he equips us to do what he's called out, set out for us to do. If we, if we don't surrender to God, then we're, not going, we're going to be accountable for that. Because God's got a purpose for each one of us. Now, I want us to look at uh, Exodus chapter 2, verse 11, and we're gonna, we'll see this a little closer, and I believe it will, maybe we'll understand a little better when we look at the life of Moses. Now, between verse 10 and verse 11, there's 40 years of time. Now, wouldn't it be nice to know what was going on during those 40 years? Well, the Bible tells us a lot about what was going on. Let me read verse 11 in chapter 2. And it says, And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown, he's 40 years old, that he went out into his brothers and he looked on their burdens and he spied an Egyptian smiting in Hebrew, one of his brothers. <clears throat> so I want to I want to stop there before we go to the rest of these verses so we can better understand. So let's, I want to read from Hebrew chapter 11. And I'll begin with verse 23. This is what's going on between verse 10 and verse 11. Those 40 years that Moses is, is in Pharaoh's house. So we find in verse, chapter, Hebrew chapter 11, verse 23, says, By faith Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper ch child. God had revealed that to them. And they were not afraid of the king's commandments. Now one thing that we need to understand is that we're, God's Bible, God's Word, tells us to obey man's law to the extent that he's not in opposition to God's law. And so they were the scripture says that Moses' parents weren't afraid of the king's command, but they were, honored God, feared God's law more than man's law. But in verse 24, in Moses, by faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Now what did he refuse? So during this 40 years of time, uh, Moses had, had everything. He had the finest clothes, finest sandals. He was well educated. He had 
had all the money, all the everything that he could possibly heart desire, Moses had it, and he says he refused it. Why did he refuse it? And this is one thing I want us to see this morning that I think will help us uh, and understand a little bit about what's going on in the world today. So in verse 25 says, choosing rather to, to suffer the afflictions with his people uh, than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Moses realized what a lot of people today did not realize. All the wealth and everything we can gain here on this earth is good for this earth. But the moment you, you breathe your last breath, all that's gone. All that's gone. So Moses said, Moses realized that what he had and he could keep would only suffice him during his earth walk. So he says in verse 26, that esteeming the reproach of, of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. So he said, I'd rather have the treasures of heaven than have anything that this world has to offer me. The Bible says, what does man gain if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? There's a verse in the, in the book of Psalms that uh, I had just left the RAs and had grown up to go to the, my first brotherhood meeting. That was a big deal for me. No longer am I a child. I'm a member of the brotherhood. But in that day, they always called the role, but, they, but you didn't say present. You quoted a Bible verse. And so I knew, I was sitting in the driveway, I remember just like, I don't remember what it did yesterday, but I remember what it did 60 years ago. I was sitting there and waiting on Herb and the day he come out, and I said, I gotta get a Bible verse. So I turned in Aaron Psalms, it says, thy law, is better to me than thousands of silver and gold. And that's, that stayed with me. Thy law is better to me than thousands of silver and gold. I went, went to the church that night and I quoted my verse. And lo and behold, every, every man in there had the same verse. Jesus wept. So <laughs> that's the only verse the rest of them knew. It's either John 3, 16, or Jesus will. But thy law is better to me than thousands of silver and gold. Moses knew this. He knew this. So I want, to, I want to go just a little bit further, and we're going to go back over to Exodus. But in Acts chapter 7, beginning with verse, uh, let's begin with verse 22, Acts 7, 22. And Moses was learned, now this is that 40 years between verse 10 and verse 11. And Moses was learned in all wisdom of the Egyptians, and he was mighty in words and in deeds. I've been falsely accused sometimes of saying, uh, how can I put this where you would understand it? Some people think that you don't have to wonder what I'm thinking because I'll tell you. Uh, this is... I think Moses had a lot of that gene. He was mighty in words. He was educated. He knew. And he had authority. But when, by next week or so, we'll look at when, when the angel of the Lord appears to him, he's going to tell him, I can't do this because you know I can't talk. You know, sometimes we choose the subject we're able to talk about. Moses was well learned, he was educated in words and deeds. And in verse 23 says, and when it was full 40 years, came, it came into his heart. So uh, this is where I want us to start seeing now that Moses' heart is in the right place. Mo God is dealing with Moses. So he says that when he was full 40 years old, he came into his heart to visit the brethren and the children of Israel. And so he feel, he, he's moving on, on heart desire to deliver his, the children of Israel. But he makes some terrible mistakes, and we're going to look at those. Verse 24 says, And when one of them suffering wrong, he defended him and avenged him and was oppressed and 
so he, he smote, he killed the Egyptian. He killed him. Now, the question here is, why did he kill the Egyptian? Our first thought would be a proper thought is that he was, he was seeing what the Egyptian was doing to his brother, the, the Israelite, so he, he, in anger, he killed him. But there's another reason that we hardly ever, I don't know that we've talked about it before when he's studying this uh, book of Exodus. And we look at verse 25, and I want, to, I want you to, to get this, for he supposed that his brethren would have understood how that God by his hand would have delivered them, but they understood not. So by killing the Egyptian, Moses, in his, thinking in his mind that, these, that his Hebrew brothers now will rise and follow him. But there's a danger in that thinking. And so we're going to look at that. So let me turn back over to Exodus and pick up and tie all this back together again. So, so we find that in Exodus chapter 2, verse 11, it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown. So now we know he's educated, he's well-versed in speech, in deeds. He went out and he looked upon his brother and he saw the Egyptian and he beating on the Hebrew, he killed him. Now Moses is going, is moving in some of the same emotions that we move on. His heart's right. Don't, let's, let's hold on to that. Moses' heart's in the right place. But his timing and his decision making is wrong. And sometimes, even in doing God's work, our hearts can be right, but the time is wrong. Sometimes we run out ahead of God. Most, most of the time we're dragging our feet. But sometimes we run ahead of God. Moses is going to run ahead of God. There's three things that's going to affect Moses' decision. At this point, one is patience. We'll see that in just a moment. The other is anger. I think it was last week I thought about Moses having an anger problem. We're going to see it here. The anger. And this is not the last time we'll see Moses having an anger problem and fear. Patience, anger, and fear is working against Moses. So let's see what happens. So it says in verse 12, And when he looked this way and that way, and when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. He looked this way and he looked that way. What was, what was he doing? He was fearful that he'd be seen, wasn't he? Or did he want to be seen? Because we just read a verse a while ago that said he supposed, he thought, by killing the Egyptian, that the Hebrews would rise up and follow him. So that was the next day. This day, anger causes him to kill the Egyptian. Now, did God, did, was, did God take him down there? Did God say, Moses, kill him? No. Was God going to deliver the children of Israel? God told Abraham they're going into bondage for 400 years, and I'll bring them out. Moses knows by his mother and by, by God speaking in his heart, Moses, I'm going to... You're the one to deliver my people. But there's a problem with the time. See, what did Moses want to do? Moses saw, Moses wanted to, to get it done immediately. How many times do you and I want something to be fixed immediately? But you know, there's, there's one problem with that. Most of the time it doesn't happen, does it? Most of the time, it doesn't. And another thing, and this has taken me uh, a lifetime to figure out. You can't help anybody. You can't fix anybody. You certainly can't not help anybody if they're not willing or not have a desire to be helped. The Hebrew people, 
this point were not ready to be delivered. I can show you that scripturally. They don't understand. They're not ready. And how can I say they're, they're biblically, I can say they're not ready because they haven't cried out to God yet. They're going to. But they haven't cried out to God. But here comes Moses. So he killed him. Who saw it? Who saw Moses kill him? Well, there's some Hebrew brothers that undoubtedly saw him. How easy is it to hide something from God? How tempting is it to try? That's two different things, isn't it? Moses, your heart's right, but your walk is wrong. Let's look a little further. When he went out of the second day, and I see he's killed him, he's buried him, and everything is good, Moses goes back up to the palace and, and uh, shakes the dirt off his, his, his sandals and sits back in his chair. And he thinks it's over. This is it. I, got, I killed him. Now the children, the Hebrews, they're going to rise up and they're going to follow me. And we're leaving Egypt. So the second day, he went out the second day, behold, two men, two Hebrews. They're fine. This gets real interesting here. Moses comes up to them and he says something like this. Now, why are y'all fine? Why are y'all why are you beating each other to death? Are you, are you not under enough bondage as it is? That's reasonable thinking, isn't it? See, Moses assumes they're going to follow him. So he says in verse 14, the one that Moses is addressing, why are you beating each other? Verse 14 says, and he said, who made thee a prince and a judge over us? So Moses is standing here, and the, the Hebrews are walling around in the mud fighting. I didn't like to fight, just to tell you the truth. That hurt. I never would have gotten one or two knockdown fights. I mean, it didn't take me long to figure because I was going to be on the losing end. So it, it hurt. So they're down here, they're fighting, and somebody's going to get hurt. Somebody's going to get killed. And Moses is standing up here. What do they see? Put yourself in the Hebrews' position. You're in bondage. You're, you're working you're to death. You have very little to eat. You have no freedom. And here stands Moses. Saying, what in the world wrong with y'all? How would you see Moses? Well, think about what, what's Moses got on? His outer clothes. Here I am walking around in the mud. Me and you, we're supposed to be the same. We're brothers. And I'm walking around here in the mud trying to, trying to defend myself. And you're standing here with the finest clothes that money can buy, the best education, every freedom that could possibly have, rings on every finger, shiny sandals on, and you're telling me, what are y'all fighting for? What's one of the things you got to do if you want to help someone, if you want someone to listen to you, if you want someone to follow your advice? What's one of the things that you have to do? What do you think? If you don't trust me, why are you sitting in, in here? If you don't trust that I'm, take, that I'm, that I'm will teach the Bible, why do you come? You have to try. Are you going to follow someone that you have no faith in whatsoever? You don't have a clue. And they don't have a clue what's going on in your life. Why would, that, why would Moses assume that they're going to rise up out of the mud and come follow him who for 40 years an Egyptian in their mind. Had 
Moses thought this through? Do we do things sometimes, even, even in trying to do for God? Do, do we weigh it? Do we think about it? God, I know this is your purpose for me, and God, I want to move on your timetable, not my timetable. Moses is moving on his own timetable. So he said, and he said, who may they press and judge over us and send thou to kill me? They, they feared it. Instead of falling, they feared it. They, they knew that he had the power because he was son of a Pharaoh's dog. He could kill them. They're not going to rise up and follow him. There's three things that we need to understand. That Moses' heart's right, Moses' time is wrong. Number one, God did not leave Moses kill the Egyptian to get the children of Israel to follow him out of Egypt. He didn't need that. That was not God's plan. Number two. The children of Israel, the Hebrew, they're not they're not ready. I thought about it just a while ago. We'll see that in much more detail as days go on, Sundays go on. Third thing is this this is this is a major, major Moses is wanting to just get the children of Israel, gather them in his basket of wheels, and roll them out, take them out, and it's just going to be a, a beautiful sunny day, and they're going to leave Egypt. What's he think is going to happen? Is Pharaoh going to allow that? And just walk out. Just because Moses wants to take them out. That's not God's plan. We don't want to see this. We don't want to think about this. Because we don't want to teach you God's judgment. Okay. So God's going to bring judgment on the children of Israel before he lets the, children, the Hebrew children leave. And who's he going to use to do that? Moses and Aaron. So God didn't need him to kill the Egyptian. He needed him to be patient. He needed him not to fear. And he needed Moses when he, one other thing that Moses is going to have to learn. Trust God. His heart was right. He wasn't trusting in God. How many times do we fail we didn't trust God. We, we were, we were, our hearts were right, but we, we didn't run the course. Yeah, I want to show you. Moses is not going to keep the course. Look what verse here. He will. Let me make clarify. He will. But he's got 40 years of schooling to go to. So look with me. As we look down at the next verse, verse 15. And when Pharaoh heard this, he sought to slay Moses. Moses is running in fear. Now, go back up at verse 14. And Moses feared, and then he took off running. Keep in mind the garment. He's running with his Egyptian clothes on, Egyptian rings on. Egyptian wisdom, and he runs, and he runs, and he runs. And Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh, and he dwelt in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. As I bring the lesson to an end this morning, I want us to think about Moses. We'll go back to the beginning. He's 40 years old. He's well-educated. He knows that God's got a calling on his life. He kills the Egyptian. So assuming now that the children of Israel are going to follow him out. But what happens? <clears throat> they, we don't understand this. God had not put it in their heart. So who leaves? Moses flees for his life. 
Where do we find sitting at a well? Far away he could get from Pharaoh. Where had mom and daddy carried him when he was a child, three months old? Because they didn't fear Pharaoh, they placed him in the river. Right where the most dangerous place a man could think of. Forty years later, Moses is running for his life out of fear. But where's his faith? Oh, he's still got it. It's just misplaced. But I want you to sit with me by that well for just a moment. You know, I think in our minds, and I love to do this, and I think this is the way we we can get closer to God's word when we put ourselves there. If we put ourselves there and that, or sitting around that well, he's probably hidden as much as possible. But he's sitting there. He's tired. His, his pretty sandals are probably dusty now. And I can see him as he's sitting there. God, you told me, my parents told me that I was going to I was a special child. I was going to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. But God, I, I, I did it. I, I made every effort I could make. I, I learned the Egyptian way. I killed the Egyptian. I went down there and told and offered to bring them out, and they didn't understand what I was trying to say. God, I, I, I'm, I'm through. I'm tired. Do we ever get that way? I'm so disappointed in you, God. Was, it, was Moses disappointed in himself? Probably wouldn't say that. It doesn't say he was disappointed in God. He was certainly disappointed at where he found himself. Instead of being, he could have, if he had never gone to us, he could, have, he could have still been in the palace. But here we find him at the well. So he'd been in the University of Egypt for 40 years. He knew everything he was to know about, about Egypt. He was in line to be the king. But he had a passionate heart for his brothers. He knew that God had a special call on his life. But he let fear, patience, So he's sitting there in the corner at the well. And next Sunday we're going to look at this this closer. God's fixing to send him to the University of God. And I talk sometimes in here about going, going to the woodshed, how God takes you to the woodshed. If you look at that, that well and you look at Moses, I believe Moses is at the woodshed. God's going to take him and he's going to prepare him. And what a strange way God does it. But in God's time, Moses is going to be faithful to deliver people out of Egypt. But Moses was not ready. It was not God's time, not God's plan at that time. You and I need to be careful that whatever we do, Whatever decisions we make, that it's Bible based, God based, and that we wait on God. Wait on God. I can I can tell you a lot of things that, that I felt like that I really, really wanted to accomplish for God. And it wasn't God's time. Every time I look back, it fails. When we move with faith and we move as God gives leadership, God opens doors and opens doors. And God closes doors that you and I would have broke down to get through. God closes them, but he opens them up. So as we look at Moses, let's just keep in mind that Moses' heart right, his time was wrong. Let's pray, God, that God, you show us and keep our hearts right 
and keep us in your time. Just, uh, Father, thank you for this day. Lord, I pray that this lesson has been encouraging to us. That God, we, we need a heart for you. And we need to have a heart to depend on you to show us and tell us and move us as you would have us to, to move, Father. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.